Ugh. Come on. Damn floorboards. Hey, Judge, uh, you all right over there? Ugh, no. I was busy stomping a space spider, and my hoof went through the floor. Can you get out? Well, clearly not. I would have done so by now. Hmm. There's, There's no, no time, time left. We, we have, have no choice here. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry, Judge. It's uh, my return to Jeff Spacewood today. I'll just go ahead and excuse myself. After this cross-examination, of course. Twilight hangs out with her friends to avoid her castle home. Oh, so it looks like Twilight's going to the extremes and hanging out with her friends to avoid her crystalline home, very reminiscent of her over-anxiety from Lesson Zero. Speaking of Lesson Zero, it seems that all the girls have learned from that experience, as Twilight decides to ask for assistance early on, rather than keep her emotional distress to herself, showing how greater their bond has become since then. Though this is the first time we've seen Twilight express any real discontent of living in her new castle, her inner turmoil is understandable. Not just her harboring the traumatic memories from the destruction of her first home, but it's natural for someone to feel contempt in a new living environment, going from a cozy, warm, tree home to a daunting, cold, and empty castle, thus setting up Twilight's encounter with the remains of her home later on. So far, the first act is pretty solid, however, the second act is where things begin to fall apart. The girls attempt to decorate and improve Twilight's castle. Hold it! Objection! Take that! Ugh. Oh, my head. Ugh. Well, my fall freed me at least. Though, from the sound of things, you appear to be in a quandary now. Yeah, I know, I, I, I need to think. I need my epic thinking music. Thinking! From here, the episode's story structure is clunky. Let's start off with the song Made This Castle a Home. The vocal performance is great across the board, but the lyrics don't flow naturally or mesh with the beats of the instrumentals, which are very reminiscent of Art of the Dress. It almost sounds as if they're making up the song as they go. Right. Uh, and do it for Chewie and the Ewoks and all the other puppets. Now what of Daniel Ingram's best, but a minor problem nonetheless. Along with this, we focus on the main plot of the episode, which is each of the girls applying their own unique styles of decorating to the castle. And this seems rather familiar, doesn't it? With each of the main six going overboard with their own suggestions, thus causing an incohesive mess. From the song to this episode's major plot points, this is really a retread of Suited for Success. Though the moral and situations are different, the formula is near identical. The girls clashing over creative styles create a chaotic mess, a song centered around creative flair, realizing they made a mistake and attempt to fix it, and finally, a gift that shows their strength and bonds of friendship. Yet, yeah, this is a more clunkier version of Suited for Success. While that episode had good pacing, building the discourse of rarity stress in each scene going from one plot point to the next, this episode spins its wheels for most of the second half of the story, just going back and forth between Spike distracting Twilight and the rest of the girls arguing and fixing the castle. And speaking of the girls decorating styles, though it all doesn't mesh, they do feel realistic in their characterizations. Most of them. Rainbow Dash being a brass shelf and want to show off her accomplishments, Rarity being a creative artist naturally sees the castle as her blank canvas and the gems aesthetically mesh with the crystal surface, Piggy Pie is her natural smile making party pony self, Fluttershy and Neiji are a little too naive here. Ignoring this from a character standpoint and just from pure logic, Fluttershy's house was built to accommodate animals, and this castle isn't kept to house livestock freely walking around. AJ is building an indoor garden on a crystal floor with other outdoor farm equipment inside. <laughs> Their arguments are realistic as critiquing each other's design choices not only feels like an attack on their own personal traits, but also conveys that they know more about Twilight than the other. Meanwhile, we follow Spike trying to distract Twilight. I don't buy how oblivious she is to Spike's behavior. True, she has shown previous times how she can be oblivious to situations around her like in Look Before You Sleep and Spike at Your Service, but that's because she used books as a crutch or gets caught up in her reading and being ignorant of the others around her. Here, there's nothing inhibiting her, so she should recognize that something's not right from her number one assistant's suspicious behavior. To quote, This is not the Spike I know and love. They then head for the spa for some relaxation when suddenly... Oh yeah! If there's one thing this episode excels at, is its comedic timing, constantly throwing jokes at the viewer with its fast-paced flapstick and other humorous imagery. Leaving the spa, Spike and Twilight take the scenic route home and encounter the ruins of their old home. Now this is a huge moment. Seeing the source of the traumatic weight in front of both her and Spike, the place they all met all of their Ponyville friends, their home, their source of so many memories. This holds such great emotional weight, and we've been slowly building up this entire episode, and it's over less than 30 seconds. Just when I start to get invested, the scene just kind of peters out and just goes right back to comedy. There's emotional levity, and then there's just rushing to a character's emotional trauma as if nothing happened. 
Let's contrast this with a well-executed traumatic home return. In Forrest Gump, when Jenny comes upon her childhood house, she takes out all of her aggression and her emotional anguish on the home from being abused as a child, going from anger to complete breakdown. And the moment provides adequate time for the audience to experience her full range of emotions. Here, if you blink, you miss nothing. Great setup, but poorly executed payoff. Twilight and Spike eventually return home and see the Golden Oaks Library roots as a chandelier. This is brilliant imagery, turning a monument of destruction into a memorial of the Main Six's most cherished memories. Here is how you successfully build up and execute an emotional moment. We've been building up the turmoil between the girls coupled with Twilight's anxiety, and it comes to fruition showing that once again their bond continues to strengthen, coming together to create a great addition to the castle, but also restraining themselves to give their own smaller personal touches to the new home, symbolizing a part of them will always reside with Twilight and her castle. A bittersweet ending that works here over the previous tree scene because more time is dedicated to let the moment be itself. All supporting this episode's great moral about memories, not objects inside a home that make a welcoming home feeling. The true source of memories. So, in the end, how do I feel about this episode? This was a very comedically entertaining episode with a really great moral, but clunky pacing, retreading suited for success in a poor way, some questionable characterization, make me praise some elements and dislike other, if not more elements. I'll just say that this episode was kind of middle of the road and just kind of okay. Well, that's all for this week, MC.